Hey, so today we're going to talk about capacitors and we're going to answer a few questions. One, does it matter if the volume is all the way at 10, what value the capacitor is? And we're going to talk about choosing capacitors for your guitar and kind of what does it do to the tone curve if we change the value of the capacitor, right? So let's do an experiment and let's talk about that today. Uh, before we get started, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, the little bell next to it, and like this video because this is cool stuff and we do like, I mean, we have like 400 of these videos. I think you'll really dig them. And if you have any questions that you want us to cover, put it in the comments below. If you want to see a particular kind of video, let me know. Uh, so this is what we're doing, figuring out the capacitor thing. Some big questions that I get in my inbox all the time are, if my knob is on 10, does it even matter what capacitor is in the guitar? Also, when I change the number on the capacitor, so like 0 0.015, 0 0.022, 0 0.033, 0 0.047, does it change the curve of the knob? Meaning, like, does it sound a certain way at 10, and then sound a certain way at seven, then at five, then at three, but is that different for every capacitor value? And the biggest question is, I have X pickups. Does that mean I need to have these pots and this cap? There's tons of people that make these arbitrary rules about what you're supposed to put in your guitar with what pickups. The bottom line is, it's your guitar. You should figure out the sound that you like for your rig. Everybody plays something a little different. So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you this experimental capacitor kit that I have on our website at Dylan Talks Tone. We'll link up to it right here. Basically what it is, it's four capacitors that come in a package with alligator clips. Actually, I'm using them right now on this guitar. But basically what you do is you take this, the capacitor out, your, your capacitor out, and then you just clip in its place these alligator leads, right? You let them hang out of the guitar, just like this, and you cook, then you clip on whatever capacitor you wanna try. And we just go through the motions. Now what I did on this guitar is I put a little piece of tape on here so that I could get kind of consistent numbers every time. So what I have here is a piece of tape with uh, some dry erase marker. And so I went at, what is this, all the way up. So this is 10 and I've got it at about seven because that's where I like to run my cap of my tone pot a lot of times. And then at five, which makes sense. And then maybe at like three or four and then all the way off, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're methodically gonna go through and we're gonna do a back-to-back -back test. So we're gonna take a 0.015, then we're gonna take a 022, then a 033, then a 047. We're gonna record this and you're gonna hear one right after the other. And you're gonna hear how much difference just changing the capacitor value makes in your guitar. And then you can get one of these kits for yourself and decide for your rig because the clarity of your pickups, right? Uh, really hot pickups are gonna be different than not as hot pickups, even if it's the same kind. So this whole thing about humbuckers need this pick this thing and single coils need this, none of it applies. Because if you have a really hot humbucker and it's kind of like a little muddier sounding uh, than something that's a really low output humbucker with tons of clarity, you might want a different cap. How do you know? You experiment. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so let's go ahead and start with, what do we have on here so far? This is the .0015. This is just a Sprague orange drop cap, it comes in the kit. We're gonna turn all the knobs to 10 and I'm just gonna play the same chord progression over and over. Okay, now we're gonna do, this is kind of the extreme, but we're gonna do the same exact thing, but we're gonna do it with the tone all the way off. So this is volume up, tone all the way down with a capacitor that's 0.015 and the screen will be labeled and we'll play the same exact chord progression.
All right, so now what we're gonna do is now that we see the kind of extremes, the volume all the way at, or the tone all the way at 10 and the tone all the way at zero, it made a difference in both instances. Much more drastic with the tone all the way at zero. But what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go one at a time and I'm basically gonna just play um, basic, probably just one chord and then we're just gonna go from 10 to seven to five to three to zero. And we'll do that on each capacitor and that'll kind of give you an idea how much the tone taper changes with the knob as you go down through the volume down or the tone down. Pretty cool, huh? So there you go. Uh, kind of just gives you an idea. Um, it does make a difference, even all the way on 10. If you just leave your tone pot all, all the way up all the time, the cap selection does make a difference. And on this guitar, um, because it's a telly, there's a lot of clarity there to start with. We did use the neck pickup, but there's there's a lot of clarity there to start with, so you could it kind of accentuates a little bit more. If you were to use uh, 250k pots, these are 500k pots. If you were to use 250k pots uh, with a really hot humbucker, it would act completely differently, and that's why I encourage people to do this experiment because you go and read it on a forum somewhere, or you go read it, see it in a Facebook group or whatever, and they're just going to tell you what to put in your guitar, and you know what? It might not be right for what you want the guitar to sound like, but you don't know until you do the experiment. So I think it's really cool. Thanks for hanging out and we can, and, and you can check this out, like I said, at dylantalkstone.com. We have this kit and it's not expensive either. This is not an expensive experiment. And then you get some spare parts for some other guitars and it might get your brain going on what other things you can alligator clip in there and try different stuff. Uh, before I let you go, let's do some viewer comments. We'll go over a couple of viewer comments from some past videos. Say hi, give some shout outs, that sort of stuff. Do me a favor and make sure you check out the rest of our channel. Um, we're kind of making some changes around here and upping the quality of the content and kind of changing around how we do it. Uh, I think you're going to dig it over the next few weeks. So do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and the like button. Uh, but let's go look at some viewer comments. I think it'd be cool. All right, let's go over some comments. I uh, got some interesting ones here. We're going to talk about Tonewood. How about that? Uh, hey, Dylan, Ron Just Ron says, uh, thanks for viewing all the time, by the way, dude. You comment on a lot of stuff. I really appreciate it. Hey, Dylan, I have a question for you. On another channel, we were having two discussions. One was what you were talking about in this video, and the other one was this. Why do two different guitars made identically weigh differently? I'm not talking about a few ounces. I mean like a couple of pounds. We're watching a video on a 2019 Les Paul Gold Top with P90s. And basically he goes on to discuss the fact that you can order a guitar from the same website, the same brand, the same construction, and they can be drastically different in weight. This, my friends, is why the tone wood argument is stupid. Because whatever you want to claim you feel or here is kind of irrelevant by the fact that every piece of wood is different anyway so it doesn't really matter so basically 
you can get three different alder tellies that or swamp ash tellies or mahogany les pauls or whatever that weigh all over the place due to grain density wood density um it's all it could be different from one guitar to the next if you say i want a swamp ash body versus a alder body guess what i could actually probably build you i know i could I could probably build you a alder body that you thought was swamp ash because of the way it weighed by wood selection. So when my customers talk to me about what wood they want, I discuss with them more so than tune. I discuss with them weight and balance because if you're comfortable with the guitar, if it feels good and if it works in your hands the way you want it to work, then you're going to play better way more different than any kind of tone wood selection would make um, because the wood can be any kind of it's ridiculous you can get wood anyway i don't even want to go down that whole road but the bottom line is you could get an eight pound alder or a eight pound swamp ash but you could also get a nine pound alder or swamp ash or a six pound alder or swamp ash telly or whatever strat whatever and that's going to be the difference is the overall weight of the guitar and the balance and everything and that is going to affect way more anyway that's a whole thing uh let's see the second one i like your realistic view on potentiometers people that triple their profit selling matched pots probably hate you none of my guitars are calibrated like a piece of electronic test equipment most don't even have numbers on the knobs if i like to tone at 70 percent of the sweep and another pot needs 77% of the sweep, so what? Even straight through a bridge pickup and a neck pickup are radically different in single signal. Common versus precision matched pots do not change this. Yes, you are right. We have a whole nother video on this, and that's why I wanted to bring up this question or this comment with this video, because the cap value and the pot value are number one absolutely number one to your whole tone of the guitar coupled with the pickups it has this all this sync the, all this calibrated pots and all that garbage means nothing um not in this application anyway and that's why i sell on our website we sell good quality pots and i actually i make sure they're within tolerance and i make sure they're within the narrowest side of the tolerance i actually check them all when we get them and we don't, and I actually don't use bad ones, obviously. Um, now, one gets through once in a while, but the bottom line is we quality check everything. And what do our pots cost? Three forty nine or something? They're not expensive. There's no reason why you have to have expensive precision pots. None, none whatsoever. And the people that are selling that stuff, I'm sorry, but you're just selling snake oil. That's all there is to it. Josh True. Our last comment says, let's see more off the cuff content. I want to know from you and you and you and you and you, what does that mean? Um, because I, so that came on that little parking lot opening box demo of a camera that we did the other day. You tell me, what do you want to see more off the cuff like that? I'll totally do it. Uh, but I want to make stuff that you find a value and I want to make stuff that I have fun shooting. I actually like doing that stuff. Um, I don't like sitting here talking about guitar nerdery all the time. I really want to uh, do more creative stuff. So tell me in the comments what you want to see more of and interact on these videos and share these videos and like these videos and subscribe to this channel. And the more you do that, the more I know what you like and the more I know what we could do because I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm totally with you. I want to do more of that stuff, but you got to tell me what you want. So let's do it. Thanks for hanging out and uh, appreciate everybody that commented today. This is awesome. Have a good one.